Hello everybody! Hello. How are you? How are you? Goodness. Get my chair situated here. I'm still getting a little bit of feedback, so I hope you all can hear me today. Hello Anne. You haven't been able to paint for a few months due to health. Well, I'm glad you're going to be able to uh, attempt this little guy. He is a lot of fun and I think you're going to really enjoy painting him. Um, hi Debbie, hi Anne, Kathy and Holly, welcome everyone. I wanted to come on just a minute or two early, uh, make sure everyone is ready to go here. Because uh, this is going to be a little bit of a longer lesson today because we are, you know, doing lots of steps on this guy. I do have him prepped. Um, and ready to go. If you bought the packet on my website, you know exactly where to stop if you're going to paint along with me. Um, but if you're not going to paint along with me, then just watch and paint at your leisure because uh, I do tend to go a little bit quicker when I'm teaching these live ones. So, but I'm excited about this little, um, I don't know, leprechaun guy <laughs> he's really a gnome gnome leprechaun i just put a leprechaun hat on him so um yeah he's a cutie he's a cutie so i'm excited about painting him today oh hope everyone's having good weather wherever you're at we are kind of cold here um currently i think we're right at 38 with a wind chill probably like 30 or something my tulip tree out front was blooming out beautifully over the weekend. And then we got cold temperatures Sunday night and last night. And now all my blooms are dead. So I'm a little disappointed that I'm not going to have a beautiful tree this year. It's been a couple of years. It seems like the last couple of years, every time it started to bloom out, then we get the cold temperatures and all my blooms just disappear. So... It's sad, but I do have a lot of pictures from years past where I have uh, had beautiful, beautiful blooms and uh, have taken lots of pictures and actually did one of my paintings um, last year sometime off of all those pictures I had taken. So cold in Tennessee also. Oh, Kathy, I feel for you. Snowy New York, Veronica. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we're done with the snow, but I don't know. They say we still have a chance of, of snow coming up. By the end of the week so it's just going to be Wednesday tomorrow is going to be a decent day but it's going to be windy um, so we'll get out and run all of our errands tomorrow and the rest of the week is just going to be nasty rainy cold windy oh I am oh, when is spring going to be here it's what I want to know when is spring going to be here <laughs> I am so ready for spring oh my gosh Snow snowstorm. Ooh, six to twelve inches expected. No, thank you. Nope, 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 nope. Okay. Let me make me little in the corner. So we can go over a few things before we start. I'm going to show you how I do the background. I've already got mine prepped and ready to go with my base coats on. But I'm going to show you how I do my background. Um, this is a technique that I did. I used to do a lot, uh, but I haven't done it too much in the last oh, year and a half to two years, I think. But it's a really fun, easy one for getting a really modeled, a really cool modeled background, I think. So let me go up here. And here's what we're painting today, this little guy right here. Oh, he is so stinking cute. I just love how he turned out. And uh, he really isn't too difficult. We are doing our decorative painting steps today. So we're going to be doing the side loading, the floating, all that stuff. So um, this guy's got all those techniques in it. Cold in Kansas, yes. Hello, Charlene from Michigan. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Holly. Hi, Denise from Alberta. So this, this guy, he's technically a gnome, but I just put a hat on him and made him kind of a gnome leprechaun. 
He's, he's super cute. I, I really love him. I just think he turned out super cute. Okay, so this is where I am today. Now, you guys be sure and stay at the end because I'm going to show you what we're doing next week and the week after. So if you want to see those things up close and personal, be sure and stay. Um, so this is where I've got him to right here. He's got all of his base coats on, which that's all listed in the packet, what colors you should have. Substitute whatever colors you want. You know, if you want to change him up a little bit, you just go right ahead. Okay, so I've got my um, my surface where I'm going to show you how to prep the background just based in with black green. I know it looks like black, but it's black green. And I am going to be sponging on the background here. Now I'm going to be using this sponge here. Um, it looks like this. Here's a smaller piece that's clean. This is the old foam stuff you used to be able to get to put put on your bed for you know sport before they came out with memory foam. <laughs> this is the kind you used to be able to buy and put on your bed. Um, so a friend showed me how to use this as a sponge and I used to sell these on my website. I'd bought a twin size and I thought oh my gosh that will last me forever. I got so many pieces out of that and I sold them on my website until I ran out you get two pieces about this size for a dollar and um, I you know and I put them in some of my kits and stuff I just love this particular stuff for a sponge okay uh, if you have a piece of this great but you don't have to have this in order to sponge the background you can use either a artist sponge and I have two different kinds here because you can get them two different ways Whatever kind you have will work just fine. Or you can use a sea sponge. This is probably my least favorite thing to use. Um, I just don't like how, um, of course, you know, you have to use all your sponges damp, but it has such dense places, at least the one that I purchased. So it doesn't ever get super, super soft like I like my sponges to be. So not my favorite thing to use. Um, I do like to use these and I do use the uh, artist sponge quite frequently in my backgrounds. But today I'm going to be using a piece of this. Egg crates. Yes, Veronica. <laughs> That's what they're called. Um, they do still make this stuff for packing in, uh, you know, some instances, but the bumps on them are really, really tall. Um, you could still use that, but those those bigger bumps on there, I just I just didn't think it would work as well for me. But I guess if I was doing a really large piece, those bigger bumps would come in handy because I could use more, you know, carry more paint over to my project. So a sponge for the background is what we're going to need, and I have mine setting in water so that it would be full of water so we can get ready to use it. Um, sunny and 47 in Tulsa. Well, that's nice. We are sunny here today, but we're just cold and I just cannot seem to get warm. <laughs> and I hate those days when I just feel like I can't seem to get warm. I just want to wrap myself in some kind of electric blanket or something and put it on me. Thankfully, my daughter-in-law and my son and daughter-in-law gave me a electric um blanket that's like a jacket but it covers your whole body and you can plug it in and just wear it um, so that's nice for sitting on the uh, sofa and they, they also a couple years ago gave me uh, a little thing for your feet that you can plug in it's a little heat pad thing for your feet and I thought oh my gosh they know me well I cannot ever get warm in the winter uh, um, you know especially my feet okay so I'm gonna, actually going to leave that in there for a moment because I want to put my paint out on here now all the paints are listed in the packet uh, so I'll probably just refer to them as light medium or dark in the color that we're using um, so I've got my extra dark on the background so this is my medium color here and I'm also going to put out some of the background color just to help with blending Okay, so I'm going to take my sponge out of my water here, and I'm going to wring it out. Now, I only keep water uh, here when I am doing a video. So if I'm using a sponge or my sponge roller, I can just drop it in and not let the paint dry in it. That's the key to keeping any of your sponges or your rollers um, 
lasting for a long time is to always get that paint out of it and if you can't go straight to clean it put it in some water so I've had it setting in water and I'm gonna set this over here because I don't want it to be too close to my <laughs> computer equipment over there and so I've just squeezed out the excess in a spun uh, paper towel here so it is damp it really needs to be damp um, don't get it saturated it's just like your foam roller you're squeezing it into a paper towel you're, re you're removing the excess water it still has a little bit in there and you guys know I've told you this many times on all my videos why we get it damp it's so that the paint will release out of there it's full of water so it won't absorb the paint now so now when you add the paint to it it's gonna let the paint go just like your paint brushes when you get them damp before you use them that's to encourage the paint to come out of the brush that's the same thing with with your sponges and your foam rollers all right so these two little nubby things here is what I'm going to use to put my paint on so I like to kind of squeeze it up in a little ball so I have one nub here and one nub here and I'm going to dip one in the bright green and one in the dark green just kind of blend them here on my palette the black green is just to help blend out the uh, brighter green so I'm just going to start tapping this in the center. Now I know it looks bright, but this is a transparent green. So it will fade down into that background very quickly. So I'm just going to start kind of creating a circle here, keeping that green always to the middle. So if I change direction, I'm going to make sure my green is always going right there in the middle and come back in here I'm going to pick up a little of that on my sponge so I can put some out here get a little bit more and you just work your way out now the key to using one of these sponges having it damp is the first key but uh, practicing blending uh, with these sponges because you can go to the other side where it's slightly damp and then just come in here and start very lightly kind of blending that down into whatever however far you want it to go into the background because this is a transparent color I've done it with opaque colors too um, you're just using a small amount of paint so it's just going to kind of fade down into the background then with my black green, once I get it where I want it, I would probably bring it down farther for this little guy. Um, and probably out a little bit farther, you know, out through here and up through here. I'll just do a little bit more. I don't want to take too much time showing you the background. All right, so I've got big, big, big drops there. So I'm going to go a little bit over here where there's not a lot of paint. And I'm just going to start very gently blending that out. And then on your outer edges, if you want it to blend a little bit more with that black green, just get a little bit of black green and then just go in here and start blending. You can also do this in the center if you get too much green and you're like, oh, that's too much. I would let it dry before you decide to do it. But you can go in here with some black green and tap a little in there and kind of blend it and break it up and take it down. And this is a very, very easy technique. Um, the small amount of water that I have in my sponge is actually helping me kind of soften it and disperse that paint out to let it kind of fade away as it gets out farther where I can keep the brighter color in there. Now you see that was extremely bright when we put it on there. See how much it's already faded down into the background? So it doesn't stay bright on the surface. It uh, fades down into that green. That's the good thing about transparent colors. So that's how you do the background. Then you'll let it dry and add your line drawing. But if you're putting your guy on here, bring it, bring it down to where he's sitting. Okay. Just, just bring it down to where you've got, I don't know, about the same amount all the way around. You know, just depends on how much you want to have all the way around. But about the same distance all the way around, just to where it's subtle and slowly fades into that darker color 
super super easy background to do so do i have any questions on the background before we move on oh jan i feel for you <laughs> oh gosh i feel so bad living here where, where i feel like this winter is hanging on but some of you guys are really it, it, the winter is really hanging on good morning verdi you got rain there today we we're going to have rain later in the week. All right. No questions on the background at all? Everybody got it? Of course, those of you that have been following me for a long time have probably seen me do this background on several different things. So several different colors, several different ways, multiple colors. You don't have to use just one. So it's a fun background to do. It's very quick, and I love the way that it looks. All right. Let's grab our prepped surface here now you can get the packet on my website uh, it's a full packet uh, the line drawing is in there he's holding this one and got that one on his hat but I'm going to be stenciling those on with my stencil that I created for this so you can grab your packet there if you want to paint this guy all right let me zoom in on him Try not to get you off camera shot. And we are going to start with our hat. So we're going to use our darker green that I got here. And we'll need both our light and medium greens for the hat. I, I probably will go through and do all of my shading areas first. Give a chance for them to all dry, come back and repeat them, and then do all the highlights. So I probably won't follow it exactly as it says on the instructions just so I can help make it move a little bit quicker. So I'm just going to get my shading colors out for my hat and my pants. I'm going to need two colors for my pants and then for my shoes and my arms and my hat band. So yeah, I'll need some white and some black. I put a new light above my Palette, but I'm not sure that it's I'm trying to get that to, to show that the palette is white. I don't know. The light over on the side, even though it's a blue light, keeps showing it yellow, so I'm not sure what's going on there. Okay. Okay. Um, I recommend you use whatever brushes you want. You do not have to use the same brushes I'm using, so don't feel like you have to use the brushes that I am using or that I list. I always tell you, you, you've got favorite brushes that you like to use, so just grab them and use them. Spritzing water on my palette because I'm going to be doing the traditional shading with floating. So um, I got to have water and I like, the, I like clean water on my palette so I don't have to go into my water basin, which generally has dirty water and you know gives me way more water than I want to have on my brush so I'm gonna start on the hat and I want this side to be my shaded side of my hat and I definitely need way more paint than that push that into that corner of my brush so we're loading the corner And I want that to come over about a third of the way. So I will probably bring that over a little bit farther with the next layer. And then on his hat. I do have my instructions up if I forget how I painted this. It hasn't been that long since I painted it, so... I think I think I got it <laughs> but I might have to take a moment and
check out my instructions. Okay, so I just went underneath the hat band there, and on that side, this is still just our first layer, so everything's going to be uh, not too dark at this moment. And I do want to put a little bit along the top of the hat band, just a little bit. That's kind of a wide float there. I'm going to take the water edge and take that down. Okay. I might move to a smaller brush for my pants. And where is my smaller one? There it is. All right, so we're going to do the pant legs with this darker gold color. Now, you could make his pants any color that you want. I kind of wanted to keep the kind of gold in the project, you know, because when you think of a leprechaun, you think of a pot of gold. So that is the reason why his pants are a gold color. So we're going to go along here. Let that get dry a little bit so I'll move over to the other one same thing here a little bit more paint so work it up that pant leg and you could also use like on the buckle you could use um, like metallic gold that would be really pretty. I thought about doing that. I also thought about doing a little bit of metallic gold on the lettering. But in the end, I decided I wanted the four-leaf clover to be the only thing that stood out. Um, so he's got his bling, bling, bling. It's glamour dust. You could also put a wash of gold on there instead of the... Uh, Glamour Dust, or use gold Glamour Dust. <laughs> That'd be a good option. So, I can have a lot of fun with this little guy. Now, I didn't put his hands on because I'm going to be putting on the clover later. And I didn't paint the nose because I'm going to paint it the same time that I paint the hands. I mean, I might, on this live, I might go ahead and paint the nose in at some point, getting it dry. But um, on my original one, I painted them in at the same time. Okay, so I did next to the cuffs, next to the beard, and the bottom edges. Now, on this one, I'm also going to go across the top, because this is the shadowy side here. And uh, this one, I didn't come across the top there because um, that's where I'm going to have a little touch of highlight on there. I can't quite see my shadow there. So I'm just going to wipe my brush off now. I'm not going to uh, wash it and go into that lighter yellow because the cuffs were a mix of what the base color of the pants were. So we're going to do this at the top. Um, is there anybody new that needs me to go over how to load your brush for floating or wants me to explain it a little bit? Just let me know. I will be I'll put a little bit of that gold in there maybe. It's not really showing up on the top of that one. Not that it needs to go all the way across because I'm going to highlight there. Okay, so let's go up to our buckle. I'm going to mix these two, just a, a slight mix of those two. Now, you can definitely go to a much smaller brush than I'm using here. <laughs> I'm using I'm using a 3 8 inch angle. You can certainly go to a quarter inch or whatever, or just even just use a round brush. I think I'm going to have to go more of that darker. And I want to put some of this just along the edges inside here 
So I'm really up on the tip. I'm not sure how much of that you're seeing. I might have to go to a round brush so I can get that to show up a little bit better. But I'm just going in just a few places. I mean, this, this doesn't have to have tons of detail, so don't feel like you got to get a lot of detail on that buckle. Just a little shading and a little highlights all you need. You do you do want to know where the um, prong thing comes out, so you know try to make that a little more noticeable when you highlight it. It'll definitely be noticeable. Okay, um, inside the let me grab a small brush here. Um, yes to the floating, please and thank you. I'm a newbie. Okay, let me put a quick brush came apart. This must be my old paintbrush that is not glued to the ferrule well. I'm going to put this darker gold in these two places. That's just kind of more shadow, shadow area in there. Okay, so um, with uh, um, decorative painting, we do floating for our darker values and our lighter values generally, or we can do dry brushing. Or you can do a wet on wet <laughs> blending. There's many ways to get the effect. But what I'm doing today is your traditional floating. Okay, so when you uh, load your brush, your brush has to be damp. Okay, so you'll fill your brush completely full of water. And then you lay it on each side, the paper towel. Let it wick out the excess moisture. Okay. So then your paper towel, your not your paper towel, your brush is damp. It's ready to go. So you're going to stick the corner of the brush, whether you're using a flat brush or a angle brush or whatever kind of brush you want to use. You can even do this with a filbert. Um, you know, once you develop the technique pretty pretty well. So we're going to load paint on the corner. Okay, on an angle brush, this is called the toe of the brush. Okay, on a flat brush, it's just a corner. So you're just going to dip into the paint on that corner a little bit. Now I'm going to begin blending it on my palette on both sides of my brush. It's going to, and I'll keep picking up a little bit of paint and water if I need it. It's going to work the paint up. I don't want it to get more than a third of the way across. If my paint feels dry, pick up water on this edge. This is my water edge. The heel is the water edge. In order to float in decorative painting, you have to have water in your brush. You just don't want to have too much water because it's going to make your float just spread way out, probably farther than you want, and it's going to make the paint more transparent, so you have to do it many, many times. Now, there are lots and lots of times that I do transparent floats, but for this particular technique today, um, I probably won't be doing any transparent ones. So I've got it on the corner. Now I'm just going to work it on both sides of that brush. I'm going to go over here. This is why I keep water on my palette. I'm going to, on the water edge, the heel, or the opposite corner that the paint is on, you're going to pick up water. Go back over here and dip a little bit more into the paint and work it into your brush. What you want to happen is for that paint to become a softening color. So that means it's darker when you lay it down and it has a gradation of color because it's starting to meet the water in your brush. So once they meet the way they're supposed to meet when you go to paint, you're going to have a nice float of color. Okay? So it's a gradation of color. And because you're laying water, you're laying this water down as you paint and generally when you're floating you lay your brush flat and you can pat it along or you can do smooth strokes, whatever. I like to pat it. Um, but when you lay the water down, then you're able to walk the float out because you laid the water down. You can walk your paint out into that water as far as you want to, and it gets lighter and lighter and lighter as it goes. Okay, so Debbie, was that helpful? <laughs> if not, I will um, redo and make it a little bit easier for you to understand. But that is floating. Um, some For some people it's hard to learn and the key thing is having that moisture in your brush. If your brush is dragging, you don't have enough moisture. If you're laying down thick, thick paint, 
you probably have too much paint and not enough moisture. So um, it's just one of those things where the more you practice it, the more you understand the feel of it in your brush and the easier it becomes. All right, so where was I? Oh, I'm gonna go onto the shoes here and the belt and do some shading with some black. I drew some of my lines back in for you guys so that you could see. Now right there I had too much water. It was it was a little little liquidy for me. So I just went and touched my paper towel to wick out the paint, the water that was in it, but I went right back here because I still need moisture. I just had too much. So what was left here would give me the right amount. Okay. All right, so we're going to shade with some black right here. And I do like to use my mop brush when I float because that will, if I get it a little dark or farther than I want, the mop brush removes the paint and it also softens it. Use it dry, clean it off on a wet place on your paper towel. And um, I'll try and put my paper towel in the shot somewhere. My paintbrush is over. So maybe you can see when I go to clean my um, let me turn that off. Okay. Back to floating. Okay, so I can go right back here because this is still nice and a wet color. And we're gonna go next to the pants. I don't want to fill my shoe up. I know it looked like I was filling my shoe up, but when you lay the water side down on gray or black, it looks like you're painting complete black all the way across, but that's just the dampness of the water. Okay, then we're going to go around these a little bit. flip it up and go this way. I'm going to be up on the tippy toe here because I don't want that whole toe of that to be filled in. I'm going to go along the bottom on both shoes. And we're going to go inside on the sole. And bring it up this edge. So I'm turning my brush like this so I can get a more narrow float coming into this edge. And I got a little bit of paint out in the background, I think, unless I just didn't get my green there. Which I don't think I got my green there. I can put a little dry brush of green in there later. I need a little bit of water. Blend it. When I pick up water, I blend it into my brush. And a little tiny bit more paint here on the bottom. And then let's mop that very gently. You don't want to remove your paint. If you get too, too aggressive with your mopping, you're going to remove paint. And then we'll put a little bit just tucked right in there and take the water edge and remove a little bit so that it's almost like a little line. But it's floated so it's it's a soft, soft look. It's not a harsh line. That's what floating does. It gives you these soft, soft looks without the hard lines. Okay, so we've got a layer on the shoes. Wipe some of that out. And we're going to go up to the belt on the hat. So we're going to go out here on the outer edge. And I'm going to walk that over a little bit. I've got a lot of water in my brush there. Maybe just a tad bit too much water because it wanted to keep uh, lightening my paint too much. So a little bit here. I'm going to be up on the very tiptoe here now, inside this buckle. But it's, it's blended well in my brush, so I'm still technically floating here. And I'm just 
going to go inside the buckle. I don't really want to get that paint off of my yellow. And around my little prong thing. Okay, I'll have to redo that side for sure. Okay, let's go back and, and do our second floating on our hat. Going back to my bigger brush here. Because I can get a wider float. I really want to work some paint into my brush, get it up in there so I don't have to work so hard. And just bring it over into that hat by bringing it into that wet area. Very, very gently mop that. Mopping is not required. Um, I like to do it because I love the look that it gives. So when I'm floating, I do tend to mop. Okay, go here on the hat. On this side. Bring it over a little bit and then I've got the brush tilted up because I'm using such a large brush. Generally with floating your brush is generally flat when you're floating but um, I'm going to put a little bit on this edge because I'm in such tight areas with such a large brush I don't want it to be flat. I could go to a smaller brush, but I've got this one. I know how to manipulate it and make it work. So that's where um, practicing and knowing how your brushes work, that's where that will come in for you. Okay, so we've got the two floatings on the hat. So it's looking pretty good. So go back and do a quick second on our pants and shoes and belt. We won't probably need to do our belt buckle again it's just now my second um, layer here is just it's just basically to smooth out the first because you know sometimes when you're floating especially if you do it in a choppy fashion like I do a lot of the times which means I'm patting it, it gives it a little choppiness when you do the second time you don't have to use as much paint obviously but um, it smooths it out it gives it that more smooth finish look one and finish it out and I'm just basically smoothing everything out here now you can round a little bit on the pant legs if you want the pant legs to look more round so we've only got one little area on each pant leg that we'll be highlighting it's just a very very small area cuffs here now I'm not going all the way to the edge over there I'm starting right about here because I'm gonna have a little highlight there I'm just putting a little bit of color there I really need to add a little bit of that darker darker yellow on there Especially on the bottom of the cuffs here. Give a little bit more weight to them. Okay, then we'll do our black. And then this time when I do my black, I'm going to do my shirt sleeves because I forgot to do them a while ago. They are done with black, but it is one of those floats where I completely um, thin down that paint so that it is wash of color. A little bit more on this sole here. I'm going to be highlighting right there, so I really don't need to worry about that little, little bit of a line. Let's go along the bottom here. 
I tend to make sure that I float in specific areas, even though that comes all the way across. Um, I don't want it to quite join there. Tiny little bit here. do the hat band. And let me get a little bit more paint because last time it was a little thin. There we go. So in the instructions, and I forgot to do along this edge for a, sh a little bit of shading. Um, in the instructions it does do the shading and then the highlighting like for each thing but um, I'm just going to work on one particular thing at a time so that we can move along and uh, get things going okay oh I didn't want to wash that out because I wanted to do the shirt that's okay. I'm going to go right here where I have the paint and I'm going to work it into the brush with the water that's in my brush. I'm going to then pinch out this edge because I don't want excess water in there. And this is a very sheer wash of black. And I'm going to mop that. That's going to remove some of that paint, and I didn't have a lot of moisture in my brush because remember I pinched that one side to remove the moisture that was in that side. And we'll go along this edge. And very gently mop it. Okay, we'll have to do that again. If I remember. <laughs> Especially on this one. This one doesn't look too bad, but the second float always smooths it out. Okay, let's start on our highlights. So let's... I'm going to get my two lighter greens out. For my hat. We're going to work on the opposite side that we put the shading on. So, um, let me see. I think on my instructions I did it. Well, I better read my instructions. <laughs> Just make sure I'm telling you the right way. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, ba, ba, ba. This is the hat. I did do it with Citron. Okay. I just want to make sure I was using color because uh, I know that I, and I don't think this is in my instruction, I know that I came back and added that other green in here. So I want to walk this over, and this is a very transparent color. And it looks super bright on here, but um, it's going to fade down in there. So it's giving that hat just a little bit of a glow on it. Someday I'm going to figure out my lighting to where it doesn't reflect so much. I've got every color of light you can imagine and nothing keeps it from reflecting so badly on this. All right, I'm going to come across the front of the brim a little bit and do this edge. Okay, let's highlight on the pants, and that's just going to be with some white. Now, and I'm going to dry brush. Uh, I'm just going to get an old brush. Uh, I'm going to use it dry, but when I come back the second time, it will probably be wet. So you can use it wet or dry. If you're using it wet, just make sure you get all the excess moisture out of it, and it works just fine. Um, it doesn't. It can or can't have moisture in it. It's just that if it does, remove as much as you can. So I'm just going to dry brush a little bit in through here and on the cuff through here. Now if you get too much on your cuffs in here I'm not worried so much about it. 
just a little dry brush in there. I think I only did in here once. Um, but on the cuff, if you feel like you get too much light color in there and you can't see your base color, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do it so that you can see. I'm gonna put way too much white in here. And where's my yellow gone? It's all white now. Where is it gone? We're gonna go just back to our base color which this was the mix of the white and the light yellow. And just put some back in. Take the white down. I'm not sure how well that's showing on the camera there actually because everything looks the same, but you know, you lose your yellow. It's, it's just paint. Put it back in. <laughs> it's, it's incredibly easy. Okay, um, let me finish off the highlights on the pants with my angle brush here. And we're going to put some on this edge. Maybe I'm up on the tippy tippy toe here. Go along that edge. Along that edge. Where you stop, if it makes a hard line, just take the water edge and gently soften that back. We don't want any hard lines. <laughs> You're trying to watch me and Sandy together. <laughs> oh, I didn't know Sandy was having a live today. Uh, well, mine, are, mine are every Tuesday. I don't know if hers are as well, but I'll be here. It'll be here so you can watch it anytime. But Thank you for trying to do both of us. You're, you're such a good supporter of us both. I appreciate that. All right, just a little bit over that. And um, I want a little bit of a highlight here because this is the highlight edge. So just a little bit on the top of that cuff. I've got my cuff kind of shaped weird. And I'm going to put some white. While I'm down here, I'll just go ahead and do the shoes. The shoes are kind of dry brushy for their highlight. So, you know, white, I wiped off most of the paint. And I'm still just using this angle brush. And just kind of, it's, it's dry brushy. So it's got all that texture and stuff in it. I, I love that look. Um, I think I might add a tiny little bit of black in there, maybe make it a light gray so it's not quite so bright. So I'll just mix a little bit of black in there. That'll take that down, not be quite so bright. There we go. That looks much better. And then we'll do that color on this shoe. This is just a really light gray. I might take this color while it's on my brush and do another layer on my shirt because it doesn't have to be very dark on the shirt. I'm using my finger to kind of buff that out down there. <laughs> I don't want it to be... Um, i got too much moisture here. A little bit more white in the mix because it's blending in with my base color too much. And I don't want it to be that blended with it. Let's see, I did a little bit on the top of the shoes. So that's a little wide. I want it to be narrow, so I'm going to take the water edge and just gently scooch that over. Use your brush to manipulate the paint to where you want it to go. So that's a little wide. I'm going to take the water edge. work it over. Kind of remove some of that. Maybe I'll fix the shape there. That's a little wonky. I'm going to get just a touch more black and I'm going to go up here and that might be too much black. <laughs> so I'll get a little bit more white and blend that in. And I'll smooth out this float here. drop of water there. 
And I know that looks kind of dark on the screen, but it, it's not it's not super dark. I don't want it to be super dark. So if it's looking super dark to you, don't make it super dark. Um, right there, it actually looks really dark. So I think I'm going to take my white. I forgot to wash my dry brush out. I'm going to take my white paint and just work a little bit of white in there. Kind of tone that back down. I know we're going to be having his beard come over it, but I don't want it to be um, too dark. So just a little bit of white. Just kind of dry brushing it over, over that. This side's okay. That side was just a little dark. Okay. Let me do the hat with that white. I only highlighted with white on, on the hat band. Not the hat. The hat band. Right here on this edge. It doesn't have to come over quite that far, but that looks good. I do want to brighten on the cuffs. And the very tip tops of the shoes. With my white. A little bit more right here. And also with the white, we're going to highlight on the buckle. I'm just going to use my round brush for this because it's just like a dry brush. Some white there, some there, there, and you can put a little bit across this edge here where it's kissing it. Okay, just a little bit. Super easy. You can see that belt buckle a little bit more. Okay, to finish off the hat band, we might as well just get it done. And the shoes. We're going to take our little round brush and make some holes, you know, where the buckle can tighten on the hat. And I'm going to put three over here, but I'm going to end up only seeing one by the time I'm done. But if you want to put something besides a shamrock on there, maybe you want to use this hat shape for something else. Make it a gray hat, uh, you know, whatever for something else you can. So, little bitty teeny tiny dots for um, the shoestring holes. They're little bitty bitty bitty. <laughs> I'm using this round brush, but you know, if you have a hard time doing little dots with a round brush, then certainly go to a little detail liner. I will use a detail liner to highlight those little things. <laughs> I'm going to let them dry. But we're going to go up to the hat. Okay. Ah, thank you, Lucy. She's finishing up. Okay, so back to the hat up here. We need to do a second highlight. And this time I'm going to mix the bright light green and the medium green. These are both transparent colors. Um, I'm not really sure if I want more than one or the other, but uh, I think more of the citron. And I'm going to do a second layer here. And you can walk it over a little bit and that smooth that out so beautifully and then this side of the hat I'm gonna wipe the brush off because I want to get a little bit more of just citron in here and just pity pat that in there oops just citron that bright bright green Little bit on that edge because we got a highlight on there and uh, do that okay let me add the teeny tiny little highlight on the um, shoestring dots I'm, I'm using a very short very short uh, detail liner 
so I can get some teeny tiny little dots on here. And I did not highlight the ones on the hat, but you could go up there and highlight them if you want to. So, I, I just wanted them to stay a little darker. I mean, you could draw a ring around it too and make it look like it's, you know, got an eyelet thing around it. Okay, let me dry my hat because I want to highlight it. And we'll have the hat, the pants, and the shoes all done. We're going to get ready to work on his beard. So I did a little white and light green. And a little bit along this edge. So just a little bit of a highlight there. here. Okay, so his hat other than the four leaf clover is done. His pants are done. His shoes are done. Oh, no, I didn't dry brush on the shoes. Let me, let me do that real quick. Uh, I did just a very small dry brush of a light gray. Just needs to be a little bit lighter than what your base coat color was. Just a little bit. Just pee pat some in there. A little bit more white, I think. Wipe the brush off. Oh, okay. Or do a ginormous amount in there. How about that? Because that that was a lot. That was like way too much. I need to touch this up here where I got some white in there. So I'm going to take some of that off because that was that was incredibly a lot of paint there. <laughs> okay. All right. His shoes are done. His pants are done. His hat is done. Let's work on the beard. Uh, I forgot to check in when I came on. Good afternoon to all from Oklahoma. Hello, Monty. Well, we're uh, on our way here. Um, so I'm going to be using this wave brush. This is a dynasty brush. This is a size eight. Or you can use a rake brush if you so choose. So a dynasty brush. Or you can just use a round brush. Um, you do not have to use... Uh, I mean, I've done lots of beards just by using a round brush. So um, don't feel like you have to use... A certain color. All right, so I'm trying to remember how I did my beard here. Um, I'll need that for shading. All right, so I got my medium orange here, which I'm going to mix with my yellow, my dark yellow. And I'm going to get my light orange. I put way too much out on my palette. I do not need <laughs> I do not need near that much paint. So don't don't feel like you've got to put a ton out. So I'm going to take my uh, yellow and my medium color orange and mix them together just to get a lighter orange. Add a little bit of water to it because you're using this similar to a rake brush. It's got you know those separations. And we're just going to come in here and start adding some hair stuff in here. This is the fastest way I know to get your beard hairs in here. So just mix those two. I always tap my paper to, I'm not going to worry about my shirt. I mean, I'm going to have hairs coming over it. So, I mean, you can already bring some of those over if you want. I'll be doing that mostly with a uh, round brush. Come out here into the hair and put a few out here. A little bit. Okay. That was 
a little bit more than what I wanted. So you can manipulate this brush by doing it flat like this or being up on the chisel edge and going like this. A little bit of water in your mix. It's going to make it come off the brush a little bit easier. I'm not going to add any other color in the hair out here. It's just our base color and this mix. So give him some scruffy little hair out there. Now you don't really have to worry too much about what the middle looks like, but if you ever want to paint this guy where he's just sitting here with his hands, or he's holding something else, maybe something that's sitting on the ground, you'll want to know how to finish out his beard really well. So I've got this first layer in here, so I'm going to rinse this brush because I'm going to mix up a different color. But I want to take my round brush with that mix and bring some looser hairs. I might put my dark color out here, my base color, because I think I need to bring some of those darker hairs out first. So now that we have our pants done, we can bring our hairs out. Those were that was just a guideline for where your beard is going. You know, those shapes and stuff there. So now you can really get going with the hairs and have fun with them. I'm doing the base color first with the ones that are coming out. You can use this to go out here and do a few out here if you want, but I, I don't think I did out there. Um, I just concentrated mostly on all these places where you want to see some extra hairs, fine little fuzzy beard. I don't want anything to grow, so I'm going to try not to make anything grow like his beard down here. Okay, and then I'll rinse that off and go into that mix that I did. And bring some of those out. Just on the tip of this brush, the paint needs to be sanded a little bit with some water. Those are a little fat. Don't don't like them. <laughs> I don't want them to be that fat. So thin some of those down. I don't want them to be quite that chunky. Okay, we're looking pretty good. That's our second layer there. Okay, we're going to do another layer on here. And we're going to use this lighter orange. And still that darker yellow. And I definitely need water in my brush. Make it flow. I'm just on the very tip of this brush. I'm not, um, not, oops, wrong color. <laughs> I'm not pushing hard on the brush. I'm trying to stay up on the tip. There we go. Got, got good flow now. <laughs> trying to stay up on the tip and 
just get those thinner little hairs in here and I'll come in with my round and add a few of the finer detailed ones okay let me add just a few of the finer detail ones on here uh, well, I think then we're gonna paint our go ahead and paint our nose in This is where you can start giving your beard a little bit more playfulness. Just up on the tip of this brush, my paint is inky consistency here it's so it will flow nicely but it's not so much water that it makes the color fade completely away okay that looks pretty good for his beard okay oh you had lost me Lucy I'm sorry anybody else lose me Holly did. I haven't ended. I won't end until it's done. <laughs> so, mine never went off, so hopefully it's not a issue here. Okay, I'm going to grab a small flat brush so I can paint the nose in. Did I get one small enough? I'm not sure this is small enough, but I'll give it a shot. Okay, any flesh color that you have will do. You could even mix one. Flesh colors are not the... Um, all of my flesh colors, every single one of them, are very, very thick paint. So I put some distilled water, just a couple of drops of distilled water in mine, and then shake it up so that I don't have such thick, thick paint that I'm trying to work with. But it needs to be distilled water. You don't want to be putting any bacteria into your paint. Okay. That's just one little coat on there. He's his uh he'll take a little little minute. Let me go ahead and dry that. Because we gotta do the shading and the beard before we can put on our um clover. So I want to get that dry and get another layer on there. Thank you, Charlene. I think he's a cute little guy too. Try not to let your, your nose grow. <laughs> it's very easy to do. Try to stay within the circle that you create there. Alright, so while his nose is drying, let's go in and add some shading on the beard. So, I think I'll put some fresh black out because I don't want to have to work to try and dig it out of that black that's up there. I'm going to take my base color and a little bit of black so we can darken that to a, a dark orange. You have to really sneak up on with black when you're darkening colors with black. Okay, we'll go around his nose. And don't worry, but I'm gonna come in and put some, some hairs back there so that the float is not so wide out there kind of break that up a little bit. Go across underneath the hat brim. We want to do the hair back here. Now this is where you want to separate your mustache from your hair. So next 
into the arm there. I'm not using a lot of paint here. I need it to be just a touch darker on this edge. That's almost too dark there. But this side needs to be just a touch darker. I can't uh, see the separation like I would want to. There we go. Why to stay off of your nose? That nose almost looks like it could use a third coat. Okay, let's take this color and try and remove some of that from my brush and mix some fresh here. Okay. Wick the moisture out of my brush and now I'm just going to come in and create some little shadowy areas in the, um, the beard. <laughs> wherever you want them to be just add, put a little bit of this dark color in there and create some you know wherever you want it, it doesn't matter a lot of this we won't end up seeing once we put our clover in here but if you ever want to finish it out without the clover in it you know you want to know how to okay I have way too much black there <laughs> So I just went and wiped all the paint out of my brush and picked up just that darker orange and blend it right there. Okay, let's put a little bit down here for a little shadow, a little bit above and below the arms. Try to keep that off of the arms. Damp brush, clean it up. Okay. We don't have to go here because the hands and the clover are going to be there. Um, but you do want to make sure that you are. I'm going to go around the nose again. Okay, now this is where I'm going to look at it and decide do I want to add any more darker areas in here? Do I like the way it looks? And that looks like a straight line. That looks kind of wonky. But I'm going to go with it. Okay, let me do a little bit more underneath this arm here. That one over there doesn't have um, any of the beard coming outside it. So I think we're good. Okay. I think I do want to put another coat on that nose. It's just not, it's not opaque enough for me. It's got too much, too many brush strokes in it. And it's not a smooth, smooth color. So when I do the hands, I'm probably gonna to have to do the same thing. Okay, I will dry that because I want to go ahead and put the clover on now. Uh, then we can draw the hands on. Now you can use the clover that's in the line drawing. Um, doesn't have to be the stencil, but I'm going to be stenciling it on because I did make this clover specifically for this painting. Okay, grab a piece of tape. I'm going to tape on my edges. I don't want to get paint anywhere. Okay, anywhere where you know you could go over an area. Where's my tape? Then you want to tape down. Um, I tape all of my stencils down. I just, when I go to remove the tape, I remove it very, very slowly, cautiously, so I don't 
tear any of my small delicate areas because I have learned from past experience when I get in a hurry and remove tape off my stencils I in, I just ruin them because I'll tear off one of those little delicate pieces that I need so um, just take it off carefully or just tape it in a couple places and then use a post-it note which I have somewhere or a piece of paper and just as you go around move it around so you don't but I don't always remember to move the paper so those are your options okay so uh, let's see I think I use this darker green here it's medium value green I'm using a makeup sponge they're not absorbent so do not put too much paint on there light layers always always best okay and you can have this um, four leaf clover anywhere I think I'm putting it a little bit lower than I put it on my original one the line drawing is also a little low probably should get fresh paint this paint feels like it's a little tacky okay so right there is his hand and I thought I had that covered up but I didn't so I'm just gonna throw a little piece of tape there and hopefully that will cover it up if not I'll have to go back in with my white and touch that up especially parts of stencil that are very very close to the edge of the stencil you definitely want to make sure that you have tape on there you don't want to be um, you know accidentally getting your sponge way out there I'm gonna dry this from a, a distance because this is a heat tool and it will start warping my um, stencil if I get too close so we'll just give it a little quick dry from up above dry enough that I can put another coat on it and I think I will get some fresh fresh paint out because that paint was a little tacky so let's just get some fresh this is actually my darker green not the green I put in the background but the green that I shaded with just a little you can use a stencil brush but when I have bigger open areas like this I tend to use a makeup sponge because it just seems to do a little bit better in larger areas all right now we're going to lift that off oh that's so cute okay i'm going to take my tape off i reuse my tape <laughs> so and i'm just going to set it aside to use it for for later if i need it um, i might show you how to do it with a piece of paper so you can see the difference between the two so I can get my tape off while that is drying. So here are some little, not as delicate as most stencils, but right there, I could easily, if I went too fast, tear those little tabs right off. This stencil is a little bit more substantial, so it doesn't have a whole bunch of little delicate areas on it. Okay, I want to stencil up here, this little clover. And so I'm going to put this one up here, so let's tape this guy off tape your edges I'm just reusing the tape that I just used it's just magic tape scotch magic tape covering any area that I could accidentally get my sponge into I don't want to get my sponge in it so I'm gonna try this same color I don't know how well it will show up because that's the color we shaded with so I may have to mix another green in with it let me try some of this lighter green this medium value green but it's transparent so I got to have it mixed in here a little bit not too much paint if you're just um, tracing the line drawing and putting it on that way you can just uh, paint it whatever color I list in there because I'm, I'm not sure what color I listed I think I listed the darker the darker green, which is what I painted down here, but I'm going to have to sand that right there because that got a little bubbly. A little bit too much paint on my sponge. I think that paint was just too tacky when I went to use it. Okay, there we go. Now we'll be adding some clover down in the grassy area when we do that. Um, so... 
All right, lay the stencil aside. I do have to sand that. You probably can't see it. Let me hold it up and see if you can see that texture. See all that texture in there? My paint was just too tacky. And so as I was stenciling it on, it was, it was just starting to dry too quickly. So I'm going to sand that down. You can use just a brown paper bag to do this. I just want to get that textury stuff off of it. I don't need to repaint it unless I sand so hard I go all the way down to my beard color. I just need to get those bumps off. So I got them all off. It's smooth now. It feels smooth when I touch it. So that's good to go. Okay, I'm going to draw the hands on. I'm not going to um, use my pattern. <laughs> You can certainly put your pattern on here. I just need a couple of circles. Maybe I'll use a white pencil so you can see it. I don't know which one will show up better. So I'm just, he just needs a couple of circles for his hands. However big you want to make them. He's just holding this four leaf clover. This is definitely much lower than the one in this one. Okay. But it will be just fine. Okay, let's paint his hands in. I'll be using that makeup sponge later to do my stenciling up there. So, this flesh color. It'll take a couple of coats, if not three. It took three on that nose, so it might take three on the hands here. Try to make them the same size, but if you don't get them the same size, that's okay. <laughs> not a big deal. Okay, I think I will go to a small angle brush, which this is a quarter inch size. And I'm going to shade around this one on the hat so that we can see it. So I need that dark green that we used in the background. And it's going to look like black here on my palette, but it's a dark green. And I'm going to mix it with the next darkest green. And I'm going to go around. I'm going to try and go around it. Can't really see my shape here at the top. So I'll just wing it. Hopefully I can make a clover shape. A little bit. Well, that's good enough. It's not perfect. It's definitely a wonky little four-leaf clover. Okay, while the hands are drying, let's shade on the beard around our clover. So that was our dark orange and a tiny little bit of black. Don't mix your black in. Don't mix your black and your green up. Let's see if this is dark enough to show up. So I'm not going to do it all. I'm just going to go around and do some places. Just to push it a little bit forward. to repeat it you can certainly do that up on the tippy toe of the brush right there in that tight little area it needs a tiny bit more black in it
There we go. A little bit darker. Just want to make those areas a little more shadowy. I know on the camera it might look really dark, but in front of me it's not very dark. Okay, that gives it a little bit of a raised, raised look. And I'll put a quick second coat on the hands. Get them drying. by with two coats on the hands because they didn't do too bad. Okay, got the shading around that, highlighting, or we got to do the nose yet, but I do want to put a, just a few um, bright little, I don't know if these will show up or not, oh, I got to add that yellow in there. One of the yellows to that orange and put just a few, definitely need water in there. Just a few here. And you can do this part before you put the four leaf clover in. This is just that bright yellow, the brightest yellow with the brightest orange. Just a one to one mix there. Just a few, not too much. They'll fade down in there a little bit, so okay. Let's work on both of our clovers, and we're going to shade with that dark green, and I'm going to add a little tiny bit of black to it. I think that's what I used. I'm not 100% sure that's what I used. Let me check my instructions here. Let's see. Oh, I used I used that medium medium green. This color green and some of the black green. Let's just be an equal mix because I don't give a ratio here. Just make it dark enough that you can see it because it's based with this green that we mixed in there. So we need it to be darker. Try not to get any on your hand. So up on the very tip, tip toe there. A little bit down there. Down this little stem. Try not to fill it in. Okay, we'll go around this hand. That's going to be pretty dark down there. A little bit here. I'm trying to look at my original one, see where I put all of my shading at. A little bit on that edge. one okay then I'm going to take go up here to this little clover here um, but I'm gonna try and work it out with this bigger brush this is my 3 8 inch size this is that same mix that I used on the other one I 
think that's all I did on that one. Maybe a little bit here. Okay. All right, I'm gonna look at this one, see if it needs any other adjustments other than getting it off of the hand that I just got on. Okay, I'm gonna highlight with the two bright greens mixed together. So pretty. stem. I'm going to be up on the tip tip toe and just kind of dry brush it down that stem. Okay. Probably add a little bit more of that brighter green up here on this one. And just on my edge that doesn't have the shadow I'll put a little highlight. Because we're going to highlight on the clover with some white. Okay, now this one will have to be done a second time. Bring that brighter color on there a second time. Make sure it's dry. We just want that bright green on the clover here. And I'm just kind of Putting some down into the center. I got kind of a line there, so I'm gonna have to fix that. That kind of bugs me. It's bugging me. Okay, I don't know about going up here in this smaller one here. I'm going to be putting a white highlight on there that's really going to make that pop a little bit. Okay, I got to fix that because that is totally bugging me. So I'm going to, um, on the heel, I'm going to put my base color. And on the toe, I'll put a little bit of that darker green. And we'll try and blend these two. out just a, a little bit so we don't have such a hard hard line there yeah that green on there whoo baby it's so pretty really makes it pop okay let's add some little highlights now for this one up here I'm gonna use this little detail brush and we're just gonna use some white fresh white is always best why well, I never want to stop and get um, fresh paint out So just a few highlights up there. Um, down here it's going to be, and I don't think I went with any other highlights. I may have if the instructions say I did, then <laughs> do it like the instructions, but I don't, I don't remember really off the top of my head. We're going to put some glamour dust on that in a minute and really bling that thing out. get him cute as can be. Let's finish his nose and his hands and then we can do the grasses and the lettering. Oh he's coming along. Okay so the hands. Uh, I just picked a bright pink. No it does, probably doesn't look too bright there but it's it's kind of bright compared to our base color. And we're just 
just going to, we'll have to do this a couple of times on the nose and the, the hands. And probably should have got my bigger brush. That would hold more paint. My three eighths, this is a quarter inch. Okay, I'm gonna walk that down into the nose quite a ways on both sides. So, very gently mop that. That's very wet. I had tons of water in my brush. Okay, and here we're gonna go next to the sleeve and the bottom parts of the hand. While that's drying, I'm going to bling up my um, four-leaf clover here. Now, um, if you're going to be doing the glamour dust part, I would recommend that you varnish your piece and do this at the end. Um, and you could also wash over the buckle with some gold if you want to. I just wanted the only thing sparkly that I wanted was the four leaf clover, but a little wash of gold on the buckle would be really, really cute. So I will put probably a couple of coats on here. But if you do paint your glamour dust on and you forget you haven't varnished yet, I like to varnish with a matte, flat, ultra matte, some kind of varnish that makes it look like I just finished the painting. It doesn't give the painting any extra shine. Um, if you varnish on top of your glamour dust, it's okay. You can just go back and add a coat or two back on top of your varnish. The glamour dust has its own sealer in it, so it can go right on top. It is my favorite deco art product this particular color by the way and the glamour dust comes in many 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 colors but I particularly like this one uh, this is ice crystal because it's a clear one so all the work I did underneath you can still see so we'll get this first layer drying here I love 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 glamour dust So pretty. Okay, we'll get this one drying and you can tilt it up and you can make sure that you covered all of your four leaf because when you look at it at an angle, I don't know if I can show it on camera or not, you can see if you don't get all the way to the edges or if you go out past it. So while it's wet, you can clean up if you got out past it very quickly. Um, and if you didn't get the whole thing covered, you can see where it won't be covered. So you can. Uh, Make sure you apply that. You could bling this one up up here if you want to, but I, I didn't want to. I didn't, I didn't want that one to be, I wanted that one to be the, the main guy. Okay, let's finish our nose. Where is my, there it is. No, that's not it. Couldn't find the right angle brush. Okay, I'm going to my bigger one this time. And we'll do another layer up here on the nose. And this is going to give him that super cute pink nose. So we're just leaving a small area of it um, for a highlight. If you get out in your beard, just clean it up just a little bit down here. We don't need to do a whole lot, just a, a little kiss of some down there. And... There you can see it a little bit better on the hands and the nose. His cute little nose. Okay, I'm just going to dry that super quick so we can be done with him. We'll do our grasses and stuff and then we'll go up and do our lettering. Okay, he's got a white highlight on his nose and hands. Just a little bit on the top of his hands.
just a little kiss on there. A little kiss of a highlight. Okay, we'll let that dry. I'll come back and apply a second one. So while it's drying, let's just work on our grasses. So on our grasses, um, any of your green colors, you know, pick them up, mix them together, whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter. Oh, wait, we have to shade underneath him first before we do that. About forgot. Okay, I need my black. So I want to give him a little shadow underneath him. Right, put some more black out. And so I'm going to make kind of a washy float. I've got quite a bit of water in my brush. Uh, if you've seen me do shadow floats underneath stuff, um, it's never opaque. It's going to look dark on here at first because, you know, it's wet with water. So I'm going to go underneath him and just pull it out a little bit. Maybe a little bit underneath his beard. There, I'll put some, just tuck a little bit back in there. You don't have to be too, too overly concerned about that area. And we're going to go around him. Make sure I have water in my brush so it will blend it. I would rather have it be where I had to apply it more than once than come on here way darker than what I wanted. And we'll just scoot a little bit of this down. So you can see a little bit of that shadow on there. We don't need much, we just want to give him a little, little shadow underneath him. Um, if yours isn't showing up, you might have to do it again, or maybe you didn't bring some of that lighter green down far enough. Uh, so now we're going to add our little grasses on here. And I'm just going to pick up whatever, whatever colors of green that I want to, and I'm just going to put some little grassy, okay, or some big fat grassy areas in here. Vary the colors so they're not all the same. You can put as many as you want in here. I just did three. Just three. And I'm just pulling up some little, with the tip of the brush, just kind of be fun with it. And don't stress about it. It's just, they're just grasses. Maybe a few lighter ones in here. Kind of, well, that one needs some darker ones. Few dark ones in here, and then I'm just going to get all those colors on my brush. Okay, I'm going to tap it on my paper towel to remove any of the excess, and I'm just going to come in here and I'm laying the brush flat like this and just letting it skim across the surface. This is dry brushing right here, and I'm just adding a little color onto the surface. So when I go and reload, I come up here, let me find my paper towel here, and I remove a lot of the paint out of my brush. Very lightly I'm going to come to this because I don't really know how much is still in the brush. I want a little bit more underneath these grassy areas and then just skim it. Bounce it around. Move it around. Whatever. A little bit more because I want a little bit of some finer streaky stuff in here. Barely, um, I am barely letting this touch. Let me get a little bit of moisture in my brush so it will skim off a little bit easier. Maybe I say that, but it's not working. Okay, just some fun little areas. If you get too much, take some of your black green and, you know, kind of scumble it in there and take some of the down. I don't want my grasses to look like they're up in the air. Okay, let me just scoot that out a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Um, then we can, I want to make sure that's dry, we can go ahead and stencil some of our clover down here. I just used some lighter green. Just mix them together. I'm 
Okay, so I put one here, here, and here. I did a four leaf here and then two three leaf. So I'm going to squeeze this really good because I'm not taping it down. <laughs> I know, I'm crazy. And I'm just going to lightly tap that in there. I'm not going to do much more than add a highlight to these. So um, I'm not going to get too worried about them and how they look. So I'm going to put one here. Okay, that one got a little messy. Oh no, that's the that's the grasses coming from that side. So it's not messy, it's just grasses, but I did get some paint there. A couple places where because I didn't tape it off. So you, you gotta look and see if you created some areas you don't want. And then I'll put actually I think let me dry that one because I don't want to lay my stencil in it. I'm going to use one of these that have a tail on it um, for like it coming out of the grass. Okay. Try not to go into the other ones. Tape them off. <laughs> I highly recommend that you tape them off. <laughs> okay, that, that's really cute. That's fun. I'm going to make sure its stem is kind of set down there. Give this one a stem because we can't see it. Or maybe not. Can't really see the stem, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Okay, let me dry those. They just need a highlight is all they need. a little white highlight and then we just have our lettering to do okay just a few little highlights on there hopefully you're on camera for that part let me wide angle out. Oh, he is so cute. So cute, so cute. I'm going to put a second layer of glamour dust on here real quick. So I'll have that done. Bling him up. And then we'll do our lettering. So there is printed lettering in the packet if you want to do it by hand. I'm going to use the stencil. Okay, that was, that was a ton. I mean, I like a lot of bling, but that was ridiculous there. Love that bling on there. Love it. I mean, you can even see it on the paper towel how blingy it is. Oh, awesome. Okay, let's work on our lettering. Okay. I'm going to use the stencil here. Now, this stencil, the words are grouped together, but I want to spread them out. Depending on your surface, you can keep them grouped together, or you can just use the St. Uh, Patrick's, you know, whatever, whatever you want to use off of it. These letters, however, on this T, it connects to those two P's, and since I'm not doing it as one big stencil, I put a piece of tape right there on the T to keep me from getting paint on it. Okay, so you want to figure out where you want your happy word to be. You should be able to see the top of your surface. Let me take this off of here. Maybe we can see the edges a little bit better. OK, 
Okay, so you should be able to see the top of your surface. And we can put happy right up there, as close to the edge as you want. I did not measure, I just eyeballed to make it look like my happy was centered. So I'm gonna tape off to hold it. Okay, and then I'm gonna take some of the other tapes that I used. I mean, just reuse the tapes you got. And I'm gonna tape off these letters. Now, you can use, like I said, a paper. And go along here, stencil up to where your paper stops. Actually, it's a little bit hard with the paper, I think, because your the rest of your peas are down there. But you can. You can tape it off, or use paper. I do not ever use paper. <laughs> Um, I always use tape, and I reuse the tape that I got because it's less sticky, <laughs> and uh, I don't have as much trouble getting it off of my stencil when I'm done. Plus, the tape holds the stencil for you. You don't have to worry about it bouncing or slipping or anything like that. Okay, um, so I believe I used the two greens mixed together. That's what I think. Let me see if I wrote it down. Yes. Okay. And then we're just going to use the same sponge. Mine is not dry. If the paint is dry on there, you want to cut it off and start with a whole new edge. Mine is not dry, so I'm just going to mix these two on here and not overload my sponge if I feel like it's got too much on it. We can go to a paper towel and tap some off and just remove some of it. And I'm just going to do a light tapping. I like for my first layers to be light layers. I don't want any bleeding and this paint feels like it's a little wet on the sponge. So I definitely don't want to get a heavy layer here. Okay, that needs to dry. And you can add some of the uh, clover, you know, around in the background if you want to. That would be super cute. Or draw some coins falling from the sky. All of that would be really, really cute. So just a mix of those two greens. Just, I'm just doing straight up and down tapping here. I am not pushing it or twisting it or mushing it in there. This is not a stencil brush. <laughs> so you cannot use one of these sponges like you would a stencil brush. That's not a good idea. It will get underneath your stencil so quickly. All right, I'm gonna lift up the side and take a peek. That looks pretty good. Now we are going to fill in those bridges. Okay, so now I'm going to remove my tape. I've, re I've reused this tape so many times, it's not incredibly sticky. If it feels like it's sticking, go slowly. This piece is new, so I'll be a little more careful with it where I covered up my T. So just take your time. There's no rush. you got to let that dry anyway. If I have some that's got lots and lots of delicate, delicate um, areas, those are the kinds where I might just put a little bit of tape on and then use paper to cover up the majority of it because, you know, you tear something on a really intricate stencil and you'll be extremely sad. Okay, so we got happy on there. So St. Patrick's is going to be pretty close to the edge. I don't want my K to be in my letters, so I brought my happy down. I think I'll... No, I didn't. I think my guy is setting up a little bit higher because my K is almost into his hat. It's almost into the hat up there, too. So I'm going to tape it right there. And I don't have too many letters that I have to tape off on this one down here. I do have to tape above as well. Okay, so tape your lower letters off. 
reusing this tape that you previously used helps so much because it's not very tacky. Oh wait, I just covered up my T. I don't want to cover up my T. I want to cover up the P above it. Okay. So just where that line is across there, we'll just cover that up. And then the P here. H, and I'm going to put a little piece there because I want to make sure I don't get in that. Okay. All right, so that's holding my stencil down. All my areas are covered. We're going to use that same mix, a light layer here. And these letters would be really cool with... Um, maybe some gold washed over them. We're going to be dry brushing on them. Very light layer here. Light layers are best for your first layer on your stencil. That's going to guarantee that you do not get anything underneath. Um, you said you made your stencil. Do you have a silhouette or a Cricut? Uh, I have a Cricut, several Cricut machines, but I make them with a Cricut machine. Okay. If you do use a heat tool to dry, make sure your surface is not hot when you go to add more paint, because it's immediately going to set that paint. <laughs> tap off on my paper towel to make sure I don't have too much on the end of my sponge because these are not absorbent, these makeup sponge. They're not very absorbent. Ooh, that got into my, about went way up in there. You gotta be careful. I mean, you could cut these um, sponges down smaller. Now I use my makeup sponges till there's literally nothing left. So I let the end dry, I cut it off and I keep using it till there's nothing left. So. All right, there we got St. Patrick's, and we just need day. So I'm going to take the tape off of the word day. And it's going to be over here. I'm just kind of eyeballing where it needs to be. I didn't, I didn't do any kind of measuring on any of this, so... Tape, tape, tape. Oh, I got it in my A there. All right, back to our paint here. A little bit of both greens. Tap, tap, tap the paper towel. Light, light, light. Light tapping on your stencil on your surface. Just about got my word day <laughs> too close to the edge, but it'll work out. Generally, I'll let it just dry. Um, it doesn't take very long with that light layer. And then I'll do a second quick layer. do find you get an area that you don't tape off whatever is your main color that you used in your background or if you can tell the color that it's in just go in and lightly touch it up okay there we go happy st. Patrick's Day it looks fairly straight <laughs> I'm surprised 
I'm so surprised. All right, we just need to close up our bridges here and add some highlight on here. So it will take two coat to cover to um, take care of these bridges on here. So these are the gaps that you have to have when you make a stencil that has an enclosed area. You cannot make a stencil that has a circle or any type of enclosed area in it if without bridges. And then if I have areas that are loose, I do a practice stencil first. And if I have areas that are really loose and might cause some bouncing of some kind, I'll tint like right in there because there's so much connected here. Um, I will put a uh, bridge in there to make sure that when you're stenciling, I didn't used to do that. I would just do where the loops were, but um, I have learned that some of those areas need a bridge just to make it a little bit easier to use the stencil. So I really work hard at making my stencils user friendly. And these letters are really fun. I thought they were incredibly fun letters. Just using both those greens that we base coated it in with. Fresh paint, you want to use fresh paint when you're doing this because, well, when you're stenciling, you also want to use fresh paint because you saw when I used that that wasn't fresh a while ago on my clover how raised up and bumpy it made it. Okay, let me just do a second quick coat. These are so fast. Now that we've got them closed up, it's a little bit easier to go back over and get a second coat on any place you need to. Just mixing both those greens. I like to close the bridges because I think it makes it look more like you hand lettered it and you worked incredibly hard. I do like doing hand lettering. I think it's very enjoyable and fun. It teaches you great, great brush control. All right, let's put a highlight on these letters. Okay, what did I highlight with? That bright green. Yeah, I think I did it a couple of times. I did not use white, I don't believe. Hopefully you can see that on my palette. Okay, this is just a dry brush. Just drag it down the letters. Staying mostly on the tops of these letters. I'm going to bring it down the P a little bit farther. I'm just using this small round brush. because we're dry brushing this will dry very very quickly so I don't have hardly any moisture in my brush but I do have moisture in it but just enough not too much because it is technically dry brushing. Okay, just a second little quick one on there. 
and we'll have this one done. I think that second one on there really makes that highlight pop. And like I said, you could put gold on here if you wanted some gold on here. But I didn't want to go that route. Not for this guy. So cute! Alright, he is done. I knew this was going to be a much longer class lesson, but so cute. Let me wide angle out. We're going to get them both out here. Take a look, see. Let me get out of the way. Okay, let's see how they look. A little wider. There we go. Move them over. <laughs> okay, they are so cute. Oh my gosh, I loved this project. So incredibly cute. This is my original. This is the one we did today. Super cute, super cute. Oh, Veronica, got the packet, wanted to watch first. Painted your other St. Patrick's pattern, so pretty. Oh, thank you, Veronica. Uh, he turned out so cute. Thanks for amazing project. You're welcome. And so cool. I have, I love that background technique. Thank you. Yes, Jen, you're welcome. Um, that is one of my favorite because it's so easy um, and so easy to blend and just keep working at it till you till you got it on there. So, thank you, Lucy and Holly and Dale and Sharita. Kathy, I hate hand lettering. A stencil for me, if I can get away with it. Well, you know, stencils are great because they do make the project go much, much quicker. But if you ever really want to learn hand lettering, you know, a little more brush control, hand lettering is the way to go. So, yeah. I like, I like doing hand lettering, but a lot of times I'm in a hurry. I just want to get the lettering done. So... That's one of the reasons why I create stencils for some of my designs that have lettering on it because I just want to get the lettering done so I can move on to something else. This um, Glamour Dust looks like it's a little thicker on this one. Let me hold it up. You can kind of see the shading on it now. It looks similar, but when I lay it flat, I don't know, maybe it's get, getting a little glare from this lamp. Who knows? Oops. So he's super cute. I hope you guys paint him and have enjoyed watching this one because he was just, oh, I, I could not hardly wait to share him with you. So he was a lot of fun. So see, that's that's my original one on my surface I showed you last week where I just reuse my surfaces. Uh, I already know what I'm going to paint on the back of this one. Um, it's a class I'm teaching for Decorative Painters Academy in June. So it's going to have my... Um, watercolor crayon, I'm not watercolor, my color wheel crayons on it. So um, if I ever get my surfaces up on my website for sale, some of them will have a painting on both sides um, where I have created designs on both sides. So, all right, let's set this aside and we're going to bring in what's coming up next week and the week after. So next week is this one right here. Uh, this is a 8x8 eight eight canvas, I believe. A little mixed media project. Um, scrapbooking paper here. This was just music paper from Hobby Lobby, but it's a toned music paper. Um, it's not white. You can get the white and paint on the white. That's perfectly fine. Um, I had the tone. I had so many sheets of this toned paper that I wanted to uh, use it in this project. Um, I did some stamping and stenciling on the background. It's a really. I think it's going to be a really fun project. I love how bright this is. Now, if you do not want to do the paper, you do not have to. Um, 
I will be doing the paper when I do the live next week. But with this one, I painted underneath and didn't adhere the paper on, so you could see the difference if you just want to paint it. The same colors are used on the paper as on the surface, except for this is toned. It's not painting on white paint. So if you're painting on top of white paint, I'll move that off of there. I'll take my double stick tape off of there, but this is how it will look if you just want to paint it. You'll use the same colors. This is just on top of white, and this is on top of toned paper. So uh, that's why it looks a little different. But I personally like the paper look, but that is it without the paper, if you just want to paint it without. My instructions will be for the paper. <laughs> so um, there is a line drawing uh, for this. Um, it's four pages, I think, and I do have, have, I think on this one I had quite a bit of prep instruction for you. So um, it's on there if you want to see it or grab that on my website and be ready to paint this. You can use whatever stencils in the background that you want. I actually used my circle stencil. I think the one that had all the different sizes because some of these are smaller and some of them are being, I think I used the quarter and the half inch circles. Um, then this is my swirl stencil in the background. And then just some kind of word stamp. We are gonna use a word stamp to stamp all over the entire thing. Okay, and uh, I believe I stamped it, I don't know if I stamped it before or after I painted it. It looks like I, I stamped it after, or before I painted, because these colors all look like the stamp is underneath, so we'll stamp it first. So that's what we're doing next week, one o'clock. Don't miss it. Paper or no paper, your choice. Um, but you'll just... Put your line drawing on your paper. Um, if you want to put it on the back side of the paper and turn your pattern reversed, draw it on there and cut it out. And then when you go to put it on here, it will be the right direction. You can draw directly on the top as well. That's fine. And then the week after does not require a pattern at all. Um, we're going to be painting on some bag on a bag. Um, I've got two different bags here that I painted. This is a white bag. Okay, I stenciled the background first, and then I painted the flowers. This is done with fabric paint. And then fabric paint now has glitter. <laughs> uh, how can you resist glitter paint for fabric? Come on. So um, I put glitter on this one. This one is a toned bag. So it's, um, it's this color, it's not white. And um, same thing, fabric paints. We're just going to draw this flower right on the fabric. I stenciled the background first, and then we put the flowers on. Okay, I'm going to be doing a smaller bag. Now this, this bag I've had for many years. Um, I did have some still with tags on it that comes from Hobby Lobby, and they were $1.49 when I bought them. I think they're $1.99 now. And this one might be $1.99 as well. I didn't buy another one this size. Um, I bought these smaller sizes because this is what I'm going to be doing the live on. Um, one of these two. I don't know which one. Probably this one because I can keep it more flat um, for doing the class. This one, if you do it, you do have to manipulate the bottom to get your stenciling to go all the way to the corners. Um, but this is a super fun bag and they do have some that are smaller than this as well. Probably bigger ones too. They didn't have as big a variety of bags and things that they used to have. Um, they used to have one similar to this one that was black at the bottom. It wasn't this tall. It was only about that tall. They didn't have any of those. So I was a little disappointed because that's the one I really wanted to get. So they did have these with the green bottom, which are cute. And we would just be doing up here. Or this one. This one was $1.49. These are ones I just bought. And this one was $1.99. Um, so they have gone up in price a little bit. I mean, everything has. But they're still very, very affordable. I'm not going to wash them. I think when I did this one, I may have washed it, but I don't think I did. <laughs> 
So um, because these bags are just fun little bags, I, I don't wash them. So um, it is recommended with fabric paint that you wash them first. Um, you will need a piece of cardboard inside that fits inside and I cover mine with glad press and seal but you can cover it with plastic wrap and just tape it on you can cover it with a Walmart bag and just kind of tape it around it um, just something that keeps the bag from sticking to the cardboard is all it does um, if, if paint goes through but honestly um, these bags are so the canvas is so thick I've never had any paint bleed through um, and I did use a marker for the circles, the loops on here. I drew them on. I used an Identa pen. You can use an Identa pen or you can use a Deli Mate pen. Um, either one of those will work fine, but I use an Identa pen to do that looping on there because I love how retro it looked. I love how retro the flowers looked. So. Um, they were a lot of fun. Um, we're just going to be doing a smaller one, so if you want to do a, a bag, you can do any size that you want, um, but you don't need a pattern. There is no pattern required. Pick some fabric paints. I did a purple, a red, a blue, an orange, and a green. And seems like there was another color because I had six colors. There's only five petals. Um, I have green. Oh, yellow. Yellow was the other color. Uh, fabric paints are very vibrant colors, so they work well. Uh, we're kind of going to be doing a wash of color and just darkening down at the center. You can also use multi-surface paints. Um, I love the multi-surface paints on fabric. They are gorgeous, um, so you'll need that and some fabric medium. Um, I think on the YouTube listing of this, I listed everything below it. So if you go look at the description below this on YouTube, you'll see all of the paints that I used and what you will need. There's a link to Deco Art there. And if you have not bought from Deco Art this year, there is a 20% off of your total order that you can use one time and it's good till the end of June. So um, you can use that coupon code. I left it down below in the description. So um, let's make sure we don't have any more questions. I am so glad you all decided to spend the afternoon with me with this little bit longer project. Um, love this character and your method. Thank you so much, Brenda. Great project, fun watching. Thank you, Denise. Oh, thank you, Debbie and Jan and Charlene. Okay, I'm not seeing any questions pop up, you guys. So this will be the very last Tuesday of the month. There was five Tuesdays in this month. So um, I was going to skip over the last Tuesday. I thought, no, I'll just do something that is really easy that no one needs a line drawing for. You will need a pencil so you can draw your little flowers on there. But, um, and you can draw any kind of flower you want. They don't have to be like mine, but I loved these flowers, these retro looking flowers. Uh, next week, the daffodil. So I hope you all will join me for that. Hopefully it won't be as long as this guy was today, but I make no promises. <laughs> so if there's no more questions, you guys, I am going to say thank you so much for being here today. Please subscribe if you have enjoyed this at all. Please give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it at all. And please comment and please share. Um, I just appreciate you all and I love doing these lives with you. So I want you guys to have a wonderful and blessed remainder of your day and a wonderful and blessed week. I hope the weather for you is good or going to improve by the weekend. And I'll see you guys next Tuesday, 1 p.m. Central. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye.